Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. It's been a while since my last video as life has been pretty challenging lately to say the least. But today I am finally able to share with you the painting process of this black swan in watercolour, which was actually a subject suggested by a viewer and one which I've been really excited to paint. As we go through the painting, I'm also going to give you my top do's and don'ts for watercolour painting. And whilst this is not going to be an exhaustive list, will hopefully help you to get the results you want in your own paintings, regardless of your style, choice of subject or level of ability. So I hope you enjoy the video. As always, I will leave a link to the reference photo I used from Pixabay, as well as a list of the materials I used for this painting. But this brings me straight on to my first don't, which is don't think that you need to have a whole host of expensive supplies in order to paint successfully in watercolour. You really don't. But my one exception to this is paper. So do use paper designed for watercolour. If you can, go for 100% cotton paper too, as this will allow you a lot more flexibility and freedom. It stands up well to being wetted repeatedly and allows you to experiment with a variety of different techniques without having to worry about the paper pilling or tearing. If however cotton paper isn't in your budget, don't worry, there are many other options. I've been really impressed with the Arteza Expert watercolour paper for example, which I've been using to try out different techniques and it holds up really well. Another thing you do need to do before you start is to stretch or at least tape down your paper to your surface. This paper is on a block, meaning it's glued on all four sides, so I don't need to do that, but if you're working on loose sheets of paper you will, because it'll help prevent the paper buckling or warping. I also like to apply washi tape around the outside of my paper to give me a nice crisp border, but it's not essential. The next thing I want to mention is the outline sketch, and the don't for this is don't rush it. Do make sure your outline sketch is accurate, as it will be almost impossible to correct it once you start painting, especially as watercolour is a transparent medium. And don't draw this sketch in with really hard dark lines, as they could show through on your final painting and make it look cartoony and unrealistic. Now this next stage, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important parts of your painting, so don't skip it. Do plan ahead. I do have a video about how I plan my watercolour paintings here on my channel, which goes into more detail, so I'll leave a link in the card above and in the description box if you haven't seen it. But planning ahead can really help to ensure you get the results you want in your final painting. It includes everything from studying your reference photo and deciding on what techniques you'll use, to choosing colours and thinking about what order you want to paint everything in. Do also swatch your colours out first and pre-mix them on your palette before painting. This will save a lot of time and allow you to relax and enjoy the process without worrying that your paper will dry out before you've mixed your paints. Here I'm mixing lemon yellow and indigo with a bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber to create a nice bright green to use for the water in my background. Do make sure you mix enough paint too, as there's nothing worse than trying to remix the same colour before the paper dries. This darker colour I'll use underneath the swan and uses the same colours as before but has more indigo and burnt sienna in it. Part of studying my reference photo also includes looking at where the darkest and lightest areas of the image are, and I decide early on just how I will reserve those lightest lights. Will I be able to paint round them, or will it be possible to lift them out? In this case I decided to use masking fluid, just on the brightest highlights on the beak, the neck, the white feathers at the back here, and for the brightest parts of the reflection on this side. The other areas of reflection in the water aren't as bright, so I'll just make sure to paint round them or lift them out. This next don't is undoubtedly something you already know, but for anyone who doesn't, don't use just one jar of water. Instead have two jars, one for cleaning off dirty brushes and one for a final rinse and for pre-wetting your paper. Dirty water will muddy your colours and mixes, so this is an easy way to help keep everything clean and fresh. So now everything's ready, it's time to paint. 
Do make sure you have a good supply of paper towels or a cloth ready, as you'll need it for mopping up excess water from your brush and maybe your paper too. I decided to paint the lighter background first, and for this I wanted to use the wet on wet technique to get those nice soft edges and to be able to drop in my two premix greens and let them bleed together on the surface of the paper. So first I needed to pre-wet the background. I'm using a 3 quarter inch flat wash brush which allows me to paint the clean water on quite quickly. So the don't here is don't use a small brush to wet or paint large areas of paper because by the time you've finished the paper will likely already be dry. You don't have to use a flat brush but do use the largest brush you have. And if you haven't got a larger brush then why not try something like a sponge. This will work just as well. You do also want to aim for a nice even sheen across the surface of the paper and you don't want puddles anywhere either as the paper will dry unevenly. So when you think you're done just check this by tilting your paper or looking at it from the side. Now you can start to drop in colour but my next don't is don't go too dark too soon. With watercolour it's important to remember that it's easy to go darker but not so easy to go lighter. So do work from light to dark and build up to darker values gradually through layering. Here I'm adding my lightest green mix. I don't want too much detail around the swan here but I do want to use the background to help the highlight stand out and be a nice contrast to the colour of the swan's feathers. Whilst the paper is still wet, I drop in some of my darker green too, and the two colours mix together smoothly. I'm still using the flat brush and using a quick side to side motion to give the effect of ripples on the water. Underneath this one here, the paper is still just about wet enough to paint on. When you're painting wet paint onto wet paper, do be aware of how wet your paper is and how quickly it's drying. Water control and timing is something that takes a lot of practice to get right. So just know that there is a window of opportunity for painting wet on wet. And once your paper starts to dry, you enter what I call the danger zone. If you continue to put wet paint from your brush onto paper that has started to dry, you could get watercolour blooms form, where the wet paint from your brush pushes the drying paint on the paper away. So if you are in any doubt, the best thing to do is to wait for the paper to dry completely, and then go in with another layer of clean water and repeat the process. In other words, the big don't here is, don't add wet paint to paper that has started to dry. And always wait for your paper to dry completely between layers and before you remove any masking fluid. Now before I paint any more layers to the background, I want to paint the first layer on the swan. I'm mixing my own black using the indigo and burnt umber I used for the background. Using a limited palette of colours or repeating colours used in other parts of the painting is a good way to ensure harmony in your work but this is more of a personal choice than something you should or shouldn't do. The feathers are the darkest part of the painting, and painting this darkest value in will help me gauge how dark I need to go with my midtones on the rest of the painting, like on the water for example. So the do here is do pay attention to your overall values. Getting your values right will help to add depth and realism to your painting even if your colours aren't spot on. After pre-wetting the swan's head and neck, I can now loosely begin to drop in the black I mixed. And that brings me to my next don't, which is don't focus on painting in the details too soon. Instead, try painting larger areas or washes of colour first and save the details for subsequent layers. I still like to apply my brush strokes in the direction of feather growth, 
but I don't spend ages painstakingly painting in individual feathers. You don't have to do this of course, but I found it a quicker and more enjoyable way of getting that first layer down. Whilst the paper is still damp, you can also use a clean damp brush to lift out lighter areas and drop in different colours as well to make your painting more interesting. So for example, for the feathers on the swan's back that are in the light, I mixed in warmer brown tones. But on the feathers at the back and underneath that are in shadow, I mixed in more indigo. So this is how it looks, now it's dry. I've removed some of the masking fluid too. Before adding more paint though, I like to do a quick evaluation. So do remember to take a step back now and then to reflect. All too often, if we are up close to our paintings, it's not easy to see what needs attention. So try stepping away and looking at it from a distance. You can also benefit from viewing your painting with fresh eyes. So take a break if you need to as well. So on reflection, I decided that I wanted a brighter, greener background for my swan. Unlike the browner, more muddy water I could see on the reference image. So don't feel you have to be a slave to your reference photo and copy everything exactly. It's your painting after all. So here I switched out my lemon yellow and mixed quinacridone gold with the indigo instead. I painted this greener mixture wet on wet into the background and applied a more concentrated mix of the same colours onto dry paper in the foreground. Again I didn't try to copy the reference photo exactly, but instead used it more as a guide. I observed the kinds of shapes that the ripples formed and how the colours transitioned from one green to the next and as a result had a lot more fun. I wanted there to be enough detail to look realistic, but not so much that it took the focus away from the swan. I was quite pleased with how it was shaping up, so after painting in the red bill, I turned my attentions back to the feathers and began to paint a second layer, this time using a more concentrated black mix and painting onto dry paper. This gives me more precision and control. For the brighter feathers on the neck however, I wanted to give more of a suggestion of some feather detail. So my do here would be, do think about different techniques you can use in your painting that can add texture and interest. Here I'm using an old bristly brush and the dry brush technique to lightly stipple in a few feathers. Right, so now I've painted the broader, looser areas, I'm going to focus on adding more detail. So for this next layer where I want to add further detail, I've switched back to a size 6 round brush with a nice point on it. And I'm going to use the black I mixed before. It's separated out on my palette a bit, so I use the more brown tones on the feathers in the light, and the bluer tones for the darker feathers in shadow. Whenever I'm working on the more detailed parts of a watercolour painting, be it feathers on a bird or petals on a flower for example, I like to work in sections, so I paint each feather or section at a time. This allows me to add variety so the overall look isn't too uniform. So do work in sections and take your time on the main areas of focus in your painting. Watercolour is a very versatile medium and you can have a lot of fun building up details and colours with glazes, like I'm doing here. Transparent glazes can easily change up the colour of an area to add a bit of interest or depth, without losing sight of the detail underneath. I also like to add a few finishing touches with my coloured pencils just to neaten up any edges or add any last details. But for me, one of the hardest things in any painting is knowing when to stop, and I do have a tendency to fiddle and overwork things, so that's something I'm going to keep working on. So with that said, my last do is do try to be patient with yourself. Learning is a process. 
you need to experiment and you need to make mistakes in order to learn. But it does take time, so enjoy it. And if you're persistent and passionate about painting, you will get there. So my last don't is don't give up. Let me know in the comments which of the do's or don'ts was most helpful to you. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and a share as it really helps my channel out. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.